Welcome to the Lancaster Patriot Podcast. My name is Chris Hume, the managing editor of the Lancaster Patriot, and I'm joined today by Joel Saint, pastor of Independence Reformed Bible Church. Joel, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Travis Schmalhofer, former sheriff sergeant and handyman extraordinaire. Well, I'm working on that, yeah. Okay. And Luke Saint, author of The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy and the chairman of the Mid-Atlantic Reformation Society. Luke, thanks for coming in. Well, thanks for having me. Hey, a couple blue-collar guys here pull in here, and there's Travis's truck with all his construction equipment in the back. Luke pulls in with his his uh, lawn uh, business in the back, right, Luke? Yeah, look at some landscape equipment back there. Blue-collar guys with a feet on the ground that uh, know a little bit about what they're talking about. Yeah, so if you need lawn care or handyman work, you know uh, who to contact. Today's episode, though, is brought to you by Nickel Mine Floor Covering. Nickel Mine Floor Covering is located in southern Lancaster County. They offer sales and installation of quality carpet, ceramic tiles, hardwood floors, laminate flooring, vinyl, and more. Joel, you've been to their showroom. I have. Yeah, great yep. showroom. Oh, yeah. R- really nice, high-quality stuff. You can go over to nickelmindfloorcovering.com for more information and uh, check out their showroom down in Quarryville. That's in southern Lancaster County. Again, nickelmindfloorcovering.com. To support this show, go to patreon.com slash the Lancaster Patriot and become a patron and help us get more of this content out uh, to the masses. Well, today, gentlemen, we are talking about Christian nationalism. The Colson Center uh, put a webinar forum out, and uh, all of us were able to watch it except Luke. He watched the, uh, the wrong thing. But uh, we, 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 got, we got some clips here um, to, to look at and discuss Although we did listen to a follow-up podcast. So I want to just set the stage a little bit, and then we're going to get into this and interact with this, this webinar, this forum that was put on by the Colson Center. Uh, Colson Center is uh, Chuck Colson's thing. Joel, can you tell people who Chuck Colson is? Because you probably, I do. You probably I, know more than any of us. I remember Chuck Colson. Um, my mother, in fact, when I, was, when I graduated in 1976 from high school, my mother got me his book uh, for graduation present, Born Again. And, of course, it was a really big thing because that was the, during the time of Watergate and people were going to jail. And Chuck Colson then announces that he's become a believer. And, of course, Christian people are you know, mocking that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it, he apparently did become a believer. He started the uh, prison fellowship. And then uh, later on, he decided to uh, tip his, uh, dip his toe, if you will, into uh, politics. Now, of course, he already had been in politics because he, he worked in the, in the Nixon administration, of course. But he started um, Prison Fellowship, and then he began Breakpoint. Breakpoint is still is a, a, Christ, a, a Christian commentary, as we'll talk about. I don't believe it's from the uh, standpoint of actually the Bible, um, God's law word. It's more like a natural law type thing with biblical uh, quotes, if you will, sprinkled in. That's my opinion of it. Um, it's better than most, but it's not where it really needs to be. Chuck Colson's an interesting guy, though, in the sense that, um, uh, and, and and we we should learn his lesson because um, be, you know this is before he was a believer, uh, he was Nixon. A lot of people don't know this. In the book, he points this out. He was Nixon's uh, open door from the evangelicals to Nixon, and so the evangelicals thought they had a um, a, a door to Nixon. From Nixon's standpoint, though, it was, hey, Chuck, keep these people away from me. So they would go down and get their picture taken with Chuck Colson, like, hey, we have an open door to the Nixon administration. And from Nixon's side, it was like, tell these people whatever you want to tell them, just I don't want to talk to them. Mm. So there's a nice little lesson from the uh, pre-saved uh, Chuck Colson about how politics was really working from Nixon's standpoint. And I remember uh, when we went to that uh, conference down in Tennessee, they were saying the same thing. Like, we want to get, we want to get one of our guys near Trump so we can, like, so we can, like you know, influence his decisions. You know, I, I remember they 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 were talking about that. Do you remember that? I do. They, they, they were they were yeah. talking about that, and I, I think probably Trump has the same thing as as Nixon. Like, yeah, keep keep these yeah, knuckleheads right. away from me. Just make sure they vote for me. Right. Well, and a lot of them did. So okay. <laughs> um, so the Colson Center put on a, uh, a a webinar forum with three men, John Stone Street, kind of moderating or hosting it, and it was entitled "Unmasking Christian Nationalism." And I will provide the link. They did encourage people to share it, so we will put that link uh, in the description. Was that kind of a weird title, Unmasking? Why wasn't explaining or exploring? What, what's up with unmasking Christian nationalism? I don't know. Probably unmask. Mask probably has a lot of uh, searches on Google. <laughs> oh, that's so no, just an, that's SEO, good an SEO thing. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah, my impression of it was 
Mm, yeah, it kind of has a negative connotation. I don't know. What do you think of that title, Travis? I was a little perplexed about it myself. I wasn't sure where they were going to go with it. And even after watching the, the panel discussion live, I'm not sure why they chose that title. Okay. So, so you didn't know where they were going to go with it, and then afterwards you didn't know where they went with it. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I, have, I do have a few clips I want to play, but first I want to lay the groundwork uh, a little bit here, especially talking about this term Christian nationalism. I found this very interesting. Last year, Pew Research Center conducted a poll, and I know these should be taken with a grain of salt, but what they found was 45% of Americans, you know, those who they surveyed, think the U.S. should be a Christian nation. So that's almost half of those polled say, yeah, we should be a Christian nation. But then they also found that 54% of U.S. adults say they have heard, heard or read nothing at all about Christian nationalism. And then I also found this interesting, the Democrats are more likely to have heard or read about Christian nationalism than Republicans. But here it gets even more interesting. There was no group, whether Christian or non-Christian, or any subset of those groups that had more than 10% of the group with a favorable view of Christian nationalism. So, in other words, most people have not heard about Christian nationalism, but they are unfavorable toward it, and yet almost half of Americans want a Christian nation. So you have this going on in our society. Um, and I want to read something here just to summarize this study. It says, The reasons for Americans' opinions towards Christian nationalism become clearer in light of their understanding of Christian nationalism. Respondents who said that they had heard or read at least a little about Christian nationalism were asked the open-ended question, in your own words, what does the phrase Christian nationalism mean to you? In general, those with differing feelings toward Christian nationalism express different ideas. It says 13% of U.S. adults offer explanations of Christian nationalism that involve Christianity playing a dominant and institutionalized role in society. For example, this is important, basing American governance and laws on Christian beliefs and principles or establishing a theocracy. By the way, get Luke's book, The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy, if you really want to know what, what we have in mind with that term. So I'll stop there. But in other words, uh, in this poll, Americans say, a lot of Americans say we want a Christian nation, but they say we don't want Christian nationalism. And what we think of Christian nationalism is varied, but at least a substantial amount of them say, well, Christian nationalism is applying Christian beliefs and principles or establishing a theocracy. They didn't mention, oh, they did say governance and laws on Christian beliefs. So basically, we don't want our laws and our government based on biblical law, but we do want a Christian nation. And I think that kind of sets the framework for this webinar that they did this forum. Okay, how are we going to deal with this? So to me, what this poll says is there's enough spiritual capital maybe left or a leftover residual effect that Americans say, well, yeah, we want a Christian nation. It's just in our, in our blood. But yet, it's a vague desire for Christianity. The, the teaching is so shallow that these professing Christians have, they don't know what it means to have law based on the Bible. Chris, would you say that, that this means that they want a Christian nation in name only? Like, we're happy to have in God we trust on our, on our, um, on our coins still. Uh, let's call us a Christian nation, but let's keep on doing exactly what we're doing. Is that how you would interpret this? Generally speaking, obviously, there's going to be different people, and even these these guys on the podcast would be, I think, a different position. But yeah, I think generally speaking, based on this poll and based on just the general you know cultural landscape, there are a lot of Americans who say, oh yeah, we you know we're Christians. But if you start to push that and say, well, okay, what does that mean? What 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 does justice look like? Do we have to turn to the Bible for that? Is Christ sovereign over the civil matter? All that stuff. Then it's kind of like, well, no, we're good with how we've been doing it constitutionally. You know this secular you know society but we do want to acknowledge that we're a christian nation that's my thoughts or maybe it might also be that they want the majority of people in the nation to be christian okay i'm not sure i mean i didn't read the the research there on that yeah yeah it's poll. An interesting poll yeah I, i'll try to put a link for it there's a lot of yeah. information there i did find it interesting though and one of the things that i found interesting was that a lot of people have not heard of this term christian nationalism in our circles, you know, we, of course, we've all heard about it, but even some of our listeners may not have actually read or listened to anything in depth on it. So um, that's what I want to get to here. Um, so I want to start with, uh, I want to start with, this is the longest clip. It's a, about two minutes. And this is where Rusty Reno in this forum, he tries, I guess this is the closest they got. And maybe I missed another spot where they try to define Christian nationalism. And we want to try to answer these questions that people are having about you know, kind of what the, the poll questions ask. Do we want a Christian nation? What does that look like? So let me start with this clip and then, and then we'll get into this. 
maybe we can distinguish between, if you will, hard Christian nationalism and soft Christian nationalism. And here's the distinction I would make. I think it's wrong to sort of think it has to do with any details like school prayer or something like that, which I'm in favor of overturning the Supreme Court decisions that um, made it impossible for public schools to have any kind of acknowledgement of the transcendent. Um, and I would put it this way, hard Christian nationalism judges any society not organized uh, in rigorous fashion according to Christian principle to be an illegitimate society. Um, and I think that would I, that's, that's what makes that kind of Christian lesson hard. So should we be loyal to the United States of America in its current form? No, because it is not properly understood in this rigorous fashion, a Christian nation. I, I don't hold that view. I, I hold the soft view that, um, you know, based on Romans 13, we should honor the authorities that God has established over us and try to work to make them better, more just, more faithful. Um, within the methods that are given to us in the political process. Uh, and I think this is what is going on, again, on both sides, as I think Hunter absolutely is correctly said in our polarizing moment. People on the left and the right, whether it's 1619 Project or a certain kind of uh, hard Christian nationalism, they both judge, or Catholic integralism for that matter, they both judge our current regime to be illegitimate and unworthy of our loyalty. And that's a growing, a lot of young people, especially younger people, think our country's a mess, something's really wrong, and so that we, we, it must be like deep in the DNA. We just got to do a kind of a, a, a great reset. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm uh, congenitally hostile to revolutions, whether they be uh, progressive or counter-revolutions. All right, so that was, that was Rusty Reno kind of, Again, this is like an hour and a half webinar, but he's trying to give a definition of what he calls hard and soft Christian nationalism. Now, we're not going to be able to get into everything. I think one of the things that was helpful, at least, was this idea of, well, we don't want to be globalists, you know, so the term Christian nationalism isn't, shouldn't be some bugaboo we're, like, afraid of being nationalists, like we believe in nations and we're Christians. So, but we want to get into to the nitty-gritty here, and he, he kind of lays out you know, there's hard and soft Christian nationalism. So, Joel, let me start with you on that. I mean, he, he says that hard Christian nationalism is a view that if a society is not ordered according to biblical principles, it's illegitimate. I mean, maybe that's not the best choice of words. It's kind of like making it like, if you believe that, well, now you're a, you're a traitor to America. I mean, why, why couldn't he have said, you know, any society that's not ordered according to biblical principles is in, is, is in sin or is in violation of the Bible? He kind of made it like this thing, like you're either traitorous to America or you're a soft Christian nationalist. Yeah, what he did there, it seems to me, was he made the United States the standard or the status quo the standard rather than the actual Bible. And I was intrigued there because he puts up the right and the left and they both see the present regime as illegitimate. I'm not sure what he means by illegitimate. Um, not quite good enough. I'm not sure what, what he means by that at all. But it, it sounds like, hey, you know, we. to me it sounds like, you know, we must be in the right spot because uh, both the hard right and the hard left think that we're illegitimate. So it really sounds like he's uh, quite okay with where we are now. And even with his comment about, well, you know, we don't like, revo I don't like, I, you know, I'm, I'm really against revolutions. So it, it, it's, it seems to me that, he kind of wants a veneer of Christianity on there somewhere, but really, really at least there and and later doesn't define exactly what that what that is. Yeah, Travis, what do you think of that? Um, I I know that he's saying that a lot of young people are are unhappy with the the status quo and the way things are right now. Everything's a mess. That was one of the things he said, uh, and so there's this sense of feeling like oh, we have to do something. And and I would say that's true, but I don't think it's just young people either. I mean, or know, that it's bad. Joel Joel, you're yeah, not he's old guy. necessarily a yeah. young guy anymore. Yeah. I was. <laughs> I, I used to be a young guy. I used to be. Yeah. But uh I'm a former young young guy. Yeah, I think that that's I think that that's to just kind of make it a generational thing, which I don't think is really helpful. I think there's a lot of people in all generations that are looking at the situation and saying this is a mess. What's going on? What do we need to do to fix it? And the, I don't know if you're going to 
go there or not, but at the end of the, the, the webinar, they made some conclusions, which I hope we can get to that. Yeah. Um, that I just, it felt like it just kind of falls flat, you know, like what, how is this helpful? Um, and yeah, the, it seemed like the constitution and the United States is kind of the standard there. Um, you know, I'm okay with the idea of, uh, reforming the constitution and not completely throwing it out. Uh, but it didn't sound like they wanted to even do that. No, it, it, the, the picture presented. And again, I mean, there's so much here. They're trying to address this term Christian nationalism. I think we want to at least answer two questions for our listeners today is should, should, should we want, should the nation honor Christ in the civil realm? And what, what should that look like? And that's, where we're going to get to justice. I mean, those two questions, I don't think were addressed in the webinar at all. And for people that are maybe new to the topic and, and they were kind of, you know, trying to appeal to people that may not, you know, were unmasking Christian nationalism. I think at least, even if you're going to try to interact and, and maybe critique someone like Stephen Wolf, which I have no problem with um, doing that, you didn't answer the questions that from the visceral level that you think Christians would be asking like, hey, don't we want the nation to honor Christ? And what would that look like? And so at least I think we want to try to do that briefly. And we do that all the time on this podcast. At least we try, you know, and those two questions, should the nation in the civil realm explicitly honor Christ? And then what would that look like? I think we're totally whiffed and missed completely. Yeah, I would want to ask the question, if you don't honor Christ, do you dishonor him? Nationally speaking, right. I, I'd want to lead with that question. Does, does our lack of honoring Christ actually do him dishonor? And that would be a really uncomfortable question, I think, for for, for even the Christians who said we, we, we want a Christian nation, the what, 54% or whatever it was, we want a 45. Christian, or 45%, we want a Christian nation. Of, of Americans. Of, yeah, of, yeah of, of Americans. Okay, should we honor Christ? Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, then, you, you can't tell me that that's dishonoring him if he truly is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And this is where I would have just a, this huge argument with most of what I would even call conservative Christianity, because your average conservative Christian would, 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 would choke over that point, I believe. Should the nation explicitly honor Jesus Christ? He's only King of Kings and Lord of Lords. After all, I don't know if we should do that or not. Well, you're dishonoring him then. You're not, you, you're not recognizing him in his rightful place. And, and me saying this right now would scare half to death most of American Christianity and pretty much all of our pastors. Yeah, and see, I think the three gentlemen, John Stone Street, Rusty Reno, and Hunter Baker, would all agree, hey, we want the nation to be Christian in one sense or another. I think they would all agree on that and say, yeah, we want Christian values. We want people to be Christian. But then when you get to the brass tacks of it, there's all these disagreements and i don't think they really clarified much of anything it was to me more and you said this to me on the phone i mean it was there was so much statism in there and and that's a lot of what i see in stephen wolf's book which is what you know fortunate or not that's what people are kind of interacting with as christian nationalism yeah. and so can, yeah. can, can we just kind of sneak back to leave it to beaver and and not have to sound like explicit christians here and, and, and sound nice and inclusive here and can we just all kind of like restrain ourselves and so that you know that we can go back out to central park and not feel like we're going to be attacked or or, or not have our cities burnt down or, or whatever and hopefully moms and dads will be faithful to each other but do we really have to go all the way back to you know recognizing christ and having the bible as our standard no we don't want to do that yeah now luke i want to get your thoughts on that clip and i know you listened to the to the after podcast where John Stone Street was talking about this. But one of the things Reno says over and over again, or at least to me, it seemed recurring. And you can tell me if you disagree, Travis or Joel was, was, you know, given where we are in U S history, given, given who we are as a people, we should not want X, Y, or Z. Um, and given, given where we are, you know, maybe we could look for, for, you know, a, B or C, but it seemed to me the, the history of the nation became the determiner of what just like i mean i don't know if justice was even i don't even know if that word was brought up in not the, that i recall in the whole thing certainly the concept was not explored so yeah I, I think he asked at one point rusty reno i didn't get the clip that something along the effects of what would a nation look like if christians led the nation and that you know made me think right away of your book luke on, on the back flap there that's the question you ask mm -hmm. you know what would it look like and i think that was completely missed in the whole webinar i mean the closest we got to it was 
blue laws. And like we were talking about earlier, Travis, it, it would be one thing if they were like, okay, what does the biblical law say about, about Sabbath? And let's try to apply that. That really wasn't where they went. And that was the extent of their discussion on any sort of, you know, law. And they certainly wouldn't have had any sort of penalties there. So it was kind of like, okay, what, what are they arguing for? So Luke, based on that clip, and then I know you listened to the podcast, the other podcast afterwards. I mean, what, what are your initial thoughts on this? Are, are they clarifying anything? Are we getting anywhere? Well, I, I have a question for everyone at this, at this table. What do you think, if you could point to something that the U.S. government does right, what would it be? Here's something that they're doing correctly. Travis? Well, are you referring to the federal government? Anyone in the government at any point, state, um, local, or federal? Uh, let's let's start with federal. Federal. Are they doing anything right? Yes, they're doing all this wrong, but here's what they're doing right. Because my problem with what he said there, you know, the silence is, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, I knew that was going to come because you know I was trying to think. I'm like, can I point to anything? You know, dramatic someone a, effect. Someone someone put a gun in my head and said, tell me, you know, drop something that the government's doing right. You know, I die. I'd be like, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what they're and doing. And some right. people say roads, and that's a, that's a disaster. No, no, but they're anyway. not doing that right. Yeah, yeah we that, all know they're not doing yeah, that right. Um, exactly. But yeah, I mean, you could say but, maybe one. Oh, uh, yeah, they executed this guy like forty years ago. But by and large, no, they're not even yeah, dealing with murderers. Right. But yeah, yeah. Right, they're not even doing that. Yeah, you're, they're not even you're, doing you're that asking right. doing versus did. Right. Not that he never did anything right, but doing right. Um, you know, and I, I think a lot of you know knuckleheads out there would say, "Oh, they're exporting." You know, they're exporting immigrants. You know, they're, you know they're um, you know they're getting rid of immigrants who came over here illegally, which is a made up crime. But um, my my problem with what he said there was is that it was di disconnected from reality when he said, "You know, we're trying to make it more just, more faithful, more just, more faithful." We're not just at all. We're not faithful at all. Mm. We're not trying to improve the United States government. Like it just needs improving. It needs a complete overhaul. It needs a reformation. It's like the Catholic church. Oh, we're just trying to improve on it. You know, we got some things wrong. We're just trying to make it more, more faithful, more righteous, the Catholic church. You know, that's what we're trying to, that's what they did in the reformation. We just wanted to, and that's how it started. That's not how it finished. Mm -hmm. Um, but but that's disconnected from reality when you're saying things about that about the united states government oh we just didn't want to make it he, as we said we want to make it more just more faithful as if you believe we're being just or faithful at all in any way shape or form are you kidding me he's not talking about the local level because i know there are sheriffs out there that i can point to because when you said you know state local or federal uh, you know i was like uh, uh not local because i know there's some guys who are doing some stuff right um yeah. but um the, but state and federal they're not doing anything right and for him to say, well, we're just trying to make it more just and more faithful is like, you don't know, you don't know what's going on. You're disconnected from reality. This is not uh, a, a little bit just and a little bit faithful government. We're not trying to improve it. It needs a complete overhaul and a complete reformation. And that's, that's my problem. And, and you know, the, 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 the whole discussion the podcast I listen to, it's, it's, it's couched outside of the purpose of government because we're asking these dumb questions and we're saying these dumb things like, um, in this quote you have here, made of Christian people imposing Christian beliefs on American citizens, where, where, where is that? In where does that fall under the purview of any government anywhere? Imposing Christian beliefs on American citizens. Key, keyword beliefs. Yeah. What in the in, world? Inside your head. Why are we talking about that? Where did you get that idea from? Who told you that? Who told you that that's what the governments are supposed to do? Like believe or die. You know, where, where did you get that idea from? That's Hollywood silliness. Why are we couching it in terms of Hollywood nonsense? That's Hollywood teaching you, like, you know, the Christians went into the society and they just killed everybody who wasn't a Christian, you know? And that's a, that's a question I get all the time when I, when I say the word theocracy. Oh, you want to enforce, uh, you know, Christian beliefs on everyone? No! I want to get the government in a position where they're not able to enforce any belief on anybody at any point. Because, and I say this all the time, but it's because as soon as you have a legislature and you go outside of biblical justice and you start imposing man's law, you're enforcing your belief beliefs on somebody somewhere and uh you know you should never have the option to institute injustice and w when you when you have a legislature you will start instituting injustice and and that's what that's how lost we are in the purpose of government that we think that's it, it falls under their responsibility to force beliefs on people and only when you go outside of a theocracy do you have a government enforcing police beliefs right. on people 
Well, we, yeah, we see that all the time. Um, you know, under, under uh, Soviet Russia, Mao Zedong. So yes. Communists do this stuff all the time. Yes, they do. You have to think a certain way. Yes. Um, North Korea right now, Kim Jong-il, Kim Il-sung, whatever those – Kim Jong-un. Il Kim's what they got over there. Uh, going. Th- you know, you have to revere, venerate, and worship these people. You have to think a certain way towards these people. It's amazing to me, Luke, to your point – that it's the Christians who are constantly – they come at us like, we're the ones enforcing right, relief. Right, right, right. So, try, yeah. try getting a government and being a racist at the same time. Yeah, yeah it's not going to happen. And, and you know, I'm thinking you know, this, we need more just, right? All I can think of is uh, the problem with the Titanic that needed to float better. Right. It didn't float at all. Yeah. It, so, it sunk. So – to Rusty Reno's point, what you're saying, and I would agree with you, we would be those people that he's saying, we, we need to go down to the DNA here. We, we have yes. a fundamental problem. Yes. But I think the people that he's talking, see, I don't know, because he, the Christian nationalism, again, the term Christian and nationalism, we could say, hey, okay, yeah, I get that. But the way that it's been portrayed and the way that these guys are even interacting with it is more of, I would say, Stephen Wolf's book type. And that's one thing you brought up, Travis, you know, is their distinction between, because they did mention Doug Wilson at least once on the, on the webinar. But uh, Reno says, you know, hard Christian nationalism, they want a top-down change. Like they want the government to come in and, and, and enforce, you know, that belief quote was from the Pew Research. That's how Americans think about it, to your point. But, but he's saying, yeah, you know, this is what these hard guys want. They want to top down. And that's certainly not what we're arguing for. And that kind of brings us, I think, the distinction that maybe you were trying to get to, Travis, um, although there'd be some differences, of course, uh, even with us, with, with Doug Wilson. But, you know, the theonomy and, and Luke's book, The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy, and going back to biblical law, which certainly did not start with us, uh, is, I, I think, helpful to distinguish that from what Christian nationalism is being portrayed as in the modern mind. In the modern mind, it is a very statist thing. It is very statist. And, and I, w- I would say, even in this, um, I'm going to play a clip here in a minute, so maybe I'll wait to get to that, but even dealing with public schools and prayer and, and Stephen Wolf's book, uh, it is taking a lot of the statist structure that we have and saying, okay, how can we Christianize that? And the example of the school prayer, which I'll play in a minute, mm-hmm. is one example mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, how can that, we, how can we Christianize classic. statism? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's well said. Uh, so, I mean, Reno, Reno. I mean, just a few things I want to point out from the webinar. And again, I'll put the link in. You, I mean, Reno said John Locke was a Christian. And okay, maybe, I don't know the state of his, his soul, but what, what did he teach? What did John Locke teach? That wasn't addressed. It was kind of like, oh, well, yeah, we have this Christian heritage. Even John Locke was a Christian, and he, you know, he gave us or his ideas influenced the Constitution. Um, one other thing he said, Luke, I know this is anecdotal, but you know, Reno said he's a big fan of the First Amendment, and he said he cherishes it, cherishes it. Now, this is anecdotal, but I think, I think he said that a couple times. I, actually. What I never heard, what I never heard was. I cherish the law of God. Mm-hmm. I cherish the First mm-hmm. Amendment. Mm-hmm. And I know that's anecdotal. I know if we pressed him, maybe he would say he cherishes God's law. I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, mm-hmm. but in, in the end, it's like, this is who we are as Americans. I cherish our, our traditions. I cherish the Constitution. And it, it's just hard to listen to that and not come to the conclusion that those things are somehow above the law of God. Mm-hmm. And certainly in the application, there was nothing about justice. And this is one of the things that, that, I, that I've mentioned to you, Travis. Like, w- when you read the Bible, you, you don't see God indicting the people, oh, you guys just don't have enough, you know, religious values. You're not doing enough to make sure people can go to the temple and synagogue. No, it's you, there's injustice in your society, and you need to execute justice. And that was completely missed in the whole webinar. And if, if we're going to talk about what a nation or society should look like, that would be honoring to Christ. And if you want to call that Christian nationalism, okay. What would a nation look like that honors Christ? I would think that you you have to have a, a key part of that being justice, right? Because Christ came to bring about justice. So I don't know. Any thoughts on that? And I want to play another clip here and, and keep getting into this. Well, I think something you guys were just talking about, the, the idea that it was very statist in mentality. Um, you know, when you say statist, you're, you're referring to uh well you just wrote a book on it chris yeah. can you give me a definition yeah. of statist so uh-huh. that the listeners know what you mean by that because i don't think most people are going to understand yeah that. that's a great and I, I that's a great point and i actually want to read the the first definition here that you find online a political system which the state has substantial centralized control over social and economic affairs 
And, and there's a you know other definitions that are more of just about government in general, but that's the main definition that that I use. I think it's a decent working definition. The 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 state or the civil government. Some people don't like using the term the state. It's not in the Bible, but but the civil government has uh, assumed to itself centralized control over all these areas. And the only reason we can call that wrong is if we go to the Bible and say the Bible, God hasn't given them authority to do that. Right. So mm-hmm. I, when I say they're operating within statism, they're kind of assuming, hey, the state has authority to do all these things, mm-hmm. and we just want to try to Christianize that. Yep. Yeah. So then basically the state is, you know, we have our three spheres of government in, in the earth. We have the family, the church, and then civil government. So the civil government is basically swallowed up the other two or is working on swallowing them up, you know, and that's obvious in our society here. And uh, I think you covered earlier this week or last week about the German family that just wanted to homeschool their kids. Well, in Germany, they, they're they not even allowed to do that. So, yeah, that's statism. Right. You know, where the, the German government is saying you're not allowed to teach your children. Um, so, yeah, anything like that, obviously – these guys on the panel, most they're mostly coming from a natural law, Roman Catholic, Anglican. Now, the one guy was uh, what's his name? Hunter Baker. Yeah. He's a Baptist. I think I see he's a Southern Baptist. Probably. Um, and he was the farthest removed from wanting to identify with Christian nationalism uh, because a lot of times, and, and I'm here with three Baptists, uh, but you guys are confessional Baptists. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times the Baptists are very... Hopefully we're uh, biblical Baptists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you guys all subscribe to the, the London Baptist Confession, right? Yeah. 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 I do, personally. Yeah. But, uh, as do I. But, okay. okay. So ahead. the point being that, uh, you know, the ones that, that are not confessional Baptists especially struggle with this idea of the society becoming officially Christian in any way, because then you look back in history in Europe, it didn't go so well for the Baptist, you know, or the Anabaptist or depending on where you were. And so they always want to point back to that. Um, But I think that that gets at another distinction that they really didn't uh, address in the, the panel discussion, the difference between an ecclesiocracy and a theocracy, or I prefer to call it a Christocracy uh, where you basically have an officially sanctioned and in charge denomination of Christianity. Like you would have in England. Anglicanism is the official Mm -hmm. religion of the church of England or or of the state of England um, and so forth. And a lot of the European nations, that's not what um, at least Doug Wilson is arguing for. Um, Stephen Wolf, I, I know he's he's pushing more in the direction of a general Protestant religion being the official religion of of America. I think even Presbyterian he would go potentially so yeah. far as to say maybe yeah I'd have to look at the book but, again. But yeah, that, I, I think that that's a really important distinction that needs to be made. Uh, that some of the proponents of Christian nationalism, if you want to call it that, uh, such as Doug Wilson and others are not arguing to have an official denomination as the as in charge of the society. Uh, so, you know, yeah. and, and Luke could talk about, you know, what would, what would be the difference between that and a theocracy? Yeah. Well, I think I just want to mention a couple of things. I mean, it was interesting. I don't think the issue with Baptist is necessarily the confession per se. I mean, I think we could get into that whole discussion, but, but what is justice in society? And I think it was interesting in the podcast – Though they did disagree on some things, in the end, like it, it seemed like they, they ended up agreeing. And Hunter Baker at one point was like, well, if you're just saying that we need to go back to a constitutional republic, I'm all on board. Yeah. And Hunter Baker was even like, we had blue laws where I was growing up. And he didn't seem to be opposed to that. He was like, but if, if, if we had a, a blasphemy law proposal, that would never pass. And then at one point, Reno was like, well, I don't want to write that off. But then later he was like, no, I, I am against that. So in the end, it was kind of like, well, both of these guys really don't want biblical law, or at least it wasn't discussed. And I think that is the issue that we really need to, to hammer they down. They want the 50s. That's what they want. They want the 50s again. That's that's what they're going for. They, they want the 50s with the blue laws, no blasphemy laws, and we're, we're looking at the sexual revolution ahead of us and all that kind of stuff. That's what they want. That's what they're going for. Back when ice cream was, you know, uh, five cents and a pony ride was a, was a dime. You know, that, that that's what they're arguing for. And for me, statism is... 
is any time the civil government breaches its uh, proper authority. That's what to me. And, and, and I use it in the same way that the reformers use popery. Anytime that they saw the Catholic Church doing things it was not authorized to do, they'd say, that's popery. You know, and so in my mind, I use it in the same way. That, oh, that's statism. It's it's the state sticking its nose where it's not allowed to be. It's not authorized to stick its stick its nose. So that to me, that's that's my working definition of, of statism. Yeah, and and not to beat up again on the pastors as I do pretty much every week here, because it's such a wide target and you can't miss it. But I want to go back to your your point about the German family, who who are not allowed to homeschool their children in Germany, right? How many pastors, you know, with their Romans thirteen tucked into their, uh, you know, pocket, would 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 be scratching their head over this point, talking about where the state being involved, where it's not supposed to be, right? I don't know, you know, that we're supposed to obey the ones. Even even uh, Rusty uh, talked about this a little bit, you know, we, you know, obeying the ones Romans thirteen that have the rule over us, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be a head scratcher, right? These people want to educate their own children. But in Germany, you're not allowed to do that. I don't know. Are they making you sin? Yeah, boy. They're not making they're, you they're, sin, they're not, so where do yeah, I yeah. fall on this one? Yeah, where in the Bible does it say you have to uh, yeah. uh, educate your own children? It doesn't say that, so I guess we have to believe that. I guess we have to believe the German government here. Right. Oh, man. No wonder it's such a mess. Well, I, I want to play a clip now to build mm -hmm. off your point, because I think it is a good point, Travis, uh, that we certainly are not arguing for the, the church to rule the state. Right, and I guess some people view any sort of discussion of uh, of of Christianity influencing the society as that, which is not what any of us believe. It's not the I would say you know within the last fifty, sixty years a position of of theonomists, so to speak. Just so anyway, but I do think it was interesting, and I want to play this clip. But that was never addressed like a real fundamental question, like. Hey, should society honor Christ, and what would that look like? It was assumed. Like at one point, John Stone Street said, "Well, well, of course, a society without genocide is better than a society with genocide." But my question is, why? Hmm. Why? Why is a society without genocide better than one with genocide? Unless you say Christ is King and He determines what is good and what is bad, uh, and that was just kind of glossed over, which I think would have done a lot to address that issue because we're saying. You know, it would have been nice to have someone on there that could have said, well, no, we, we don't want the, the church to rule the state. We don't want the state to rule the church. To your point, Christocracy, Christ rules all, and each of those institutions has to honor Christ. And what would that look like? Um, and that's why we could say a society without genocide is better than one with. And we could also say a society that forces thieves to make restitution, not putting them in prison, is better than one that puts them in prison. Mm -hmm. But all those issues of justice were, were not brought up. So I want to play this short clip. This is 25 seconds, and I think it will address a little bit of the ecclesios, you know, ecclesi how do you say it? Ecclesios ecclesiocracy. Ecclesiocracy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, versus, you know, God's Christ rule over the uh, the society. So here is this is Hunter Baker, and here's what he'll mention Doug Wilson. Well, so I think that this uh, this sort of uh, you know, and they're not they're not exactly the same, but this sort of Doug Wilson and Stephen Wolf uh, kind of movement toward a uh, uh, a much more vigorous kind of a, a union of church and state. Um, you know, I think that both of them would speak very approvingly of uh, prayer in public schools, for example, uh, you know, devotionals, things of that nature. Uh, that was, it was really frustrating to me that, you know, I, obviously you guys know I'm a, I'm a big fan of what Doug Wilson's doing and that he got, I mean, I understand that Canon Press printed, Christian nationalism by Stephen Wolf, but there are a lot of substantial disagreements between Wolf and Wilson mm -hmm. and to just lump them in there. And then to say, and these guys would be all in support of but, prayer in public school. And that, the, I'm like, Doug Wilson well, says, get your kids out of the public school. He, he, does, he does say that, but <laughs> no, I think you guys are missing the point. We, we need devotionals back in public school. <laughs> right. <laughs> he prayer said, and, I was like, what? Prayer Let, and Bible let's reading. have devotionals. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that should set us back on the right path. But, I mean, yeah, that's I, that's Christianizing statism. Uh, right? yeah, yes. I, I mean, I was a little bit shocked by that because it's like, wait a minute, this is a uh, this is a, a, a um, religion and politics show, maybe one of the you know stronger ones in all of North America here, and we're we're, we're seriously discussing getting devotionals back in public school where they're promoting cutting people's private parts off. But you know what? Problem is not enough devotionals around here. Oh my 
goodness. That, that was that was the most frustrating thing for me watching the webinar was that they had nobody, they didn't have Stephen Wolf or Doug Wilson or anybody who's even on that side of things to right. discuss this. That's true. You know, if you're going to have a panel discussion, you should have a representative of hard, quote unquote, hard Christian nationalism on there. Uh, you know, I'm sure all of us would be in that category. Um, you know, probably we're not even on the spectrum according to Hunter Baker, you know, but it, well, well, to that point, and, 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 to, and to, you know, the, the, the point that Chris is bringing up, can we just get somebody on there who is asking what justice is? Yeah. J just, just do that. Right. But, but apparently that's beyond the pale of the discussion here. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, the issue of God's law, theonomy, theocracy is not touched. I mean, it's almost like we don't want to give that any any airtime. Um, and I guess maybe to be fair, unfortunately, that's what most people in, in the general public, so to speak, who are saying they're Christian nationalists are not going to God's law. And they're not going to what would justice look like in society? So, and isn't that your problem with Wolf? I mean, does he? Right, he doesn't really no, even no, go. Steve no. Wolf doesn't do that. Yeah, and I'm he a, admits it right up front. He yeah, says, would, "I'm not a biblical scholar. I'm going to deal with this philosophically and politically," which I understand well, what he's thanks, doing. Thanks but, a lot. No one's ever done that before. <laughs> you know, and he goes uh, into natural law, which you mentioned, which I think we've brought up on the on the podcast before. But just so our listeners are aware, I mean, natural law ends up being well, well God has you know revealed in nature. And we can kind of figure out what what justice looks like. I mean, that's my and, nutshell, you know. And it, and it seems like his his treatment of it from that perspective is about as good as you're going to get. But that also is telling to me that he's he's doing a really good job working from his premises and his presuppositions with natural law, philosophy, and all that. But it's not going to get you to a scriptural perspective. It's not going to get you justice. Yeah. I think is what, yeah. what you Yeah. How, how do you argue from natural law to justice? I, yeah, I, you know, I, I want somebody to tell me how that, how that's done. And it just seems to me as we were talking before Travis, natural law is this nice, flexible rubber band that fits just about anything. And it's like an idol to me, quite frankly, because it's, it, it does whatever you want it to do. Is, is that not what idolatry is? We set up this idol mm -hmm. to do what I want it to do. That, to me, is natural law. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Rusty Reno, I, I think he did give a – his position, I think, is kind of the, the general Christian Absolutely. nationalism, bland, we, we want a Christian society. And that's, to my point, I think in the end, he ended up agreeing with Hunter Baker on a lot of practical stuff. But – you know, some of the things that Reno said is, again, going back to the, he says he's in favor of thinking creatively within constitutional history. Again, none of it was, well, biblically, what would justice look like? Yeah, it's because I, I, they, yeah. they, they, they don't, I can't, I, I just think you can't talk about justice because we already have justice figured out in the Constitution. We're not changing that. So, you know, yeah. uh, we, we, I mean, we, why talk about justice? We already got to figure it out. Yeah, all we need to figure out now is how to let Jack Phillips bake his cake yeah. and not force abortions. I mean, that's what right. Stone Street said. Well, can we at least start with not having Colorado force abortions on the rest of us? And it, it's, it goes back to this, this Christian mindset that, well, can we at least protect our little sphere here? Yes. Can we at least have Jack Phillips, you know, not be persecuted again? That, that's a good desire, but you standards you, too low. Yeah. You're burying the lead low. on what, if we want, if we're talking about Christian nation, what is justice? Uh, you go ahead. Yeah, and I think something you were talking about towards the beginning of the podcast, uh, or actually it was Luke, that you know, as uh, as a theonomist or as a Christian nationalist, whatever, uh, the desire is not to impose beliefs on anyone, right? We do impose them, though. I mean, if we're honest, you know, if if we're going to say in our just society, adultery should be a crime. Mm -hmm. That's imposing belief. Right, but then they, they never you know. brought up that we already do that. That's what I think they really missed. That's what was disappointing Like, like to when me. he said genocide, yeah. you know, a, a nation without genocide, that's what the point that was never brought up. Like you, you have a – and this is what I have in my notes here, that Hunter seemed concerned that if we have laws against blasphemy, a which religion will end up, you know, being persecuted. Right. But, but the point – to your point, he, I think this is part of your point. He, he totally missed, well, there's always a religion being enforced. Yes, and that's the, the point I was yes, getting to. Yeah. So we are imposing religious belief right, but not, with civil but law. Yeah, but not, the, the, yeah, these folks here on this study are not factoring in the myth of neutrality. 
They're not doing that. No, they're, they're, they're not. They're not. They're not thinking about it biblically. So when I say that, I yeah, obviously that you know that it's not the nation's job to enforce beliefs. I agree 100 percent that you know you're always enforcing belief. You know, well, um, you're enforcing the the outward. The action, you're, you're yeah, not. Yeah. You're not enforcing what people think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yes. That, that, that right. was, I think, your point. Right. That's my yeah, point. And I understood yes. your point, but I think the words can get muddled, and Fair. so I just wanted to point that out. That yes. You know, as as a lot of conservatives like to say, you at the end of the day, you do legislate morality, mm-hmm. and you can't get away from that. Can't get away from it. No. You have to choose a religion. Right. Yeah, but these knuckleheads <laughs> think that you're going to be charging in the house of saying, "Swear this and sign this," and do you believe X? And right. and if you don't, we're going to cut off your head in front of yeah. your kids. You that, know? that would have been a, a great interaction, and that was totally missed. I mean, that right. that was that goes to the heart of justice. And hey, there's always going to be some worldview, some religion that determines yeah. what is right and wrong. I wish they would have had that discussion. Yeah, and I think they use the term open society. Is that – am that's I right you, about That's what you have in your – Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was Reno that used the term open society for the way things are right now. And to me, that's synonymous with secularism, okay? We, and we, so secularism get, is the religion. Mm-hmm. We, we've got to get back to the, that L word that I keep saying, the, the God's law word. We've got to get back to that. You know, thinking creatively about the Constitution, anybody can say that. Yeah, you know, and 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 I would go back to most of the things they say. Could anybody say, you know, we, we need to get back to the Constitution? Yeah, you know, we got back to the Constitution in 1973, Roe versus Wade, right? Uh, right here, the Constitution says in the penumbra of the Constitution that uh, it's a it's a born person. If we are not couching our discussion within the context of God's law, word, we, we, we are playing it on their baseball diamond. And w- w- the only way to get off of that, that I can tell, is to talk about God's law word. Thinking creative th- w- about the Constitution. What what flaming secularist communist wouldn't even agree with that point? Right. Come on, guys. Come on. And I think that that gets back to the idea. I mean, we're all reformed here. Reformed Christians, right? And what is the the motto? Semper reformanda. Yes. So the church reformed always reforming according to what constitution of course yeah the (laughs) word of god yeah Yeah. not the constitution so i would say i would argue that that needs to happen with the constitution the constitution needs to be brought back to say okay what is what is in accordance with the word of god and what is not what is not needs to be gotten rid of because i would say i would call myself a reformed catholic you know we're we come from the roman catholic church and tradition but we have reformed it and hopefully continue to reform it, right? So we call ourselves the true Catholics, not Roman Catholics, but right. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm a true Catholic, uh, but I would say that's what needs to happen: is we need to bring. Okay, how is our how is our constitution written, structured? Bring it back to the Word of God and say what needs to be changed here. Now, I'm not in favor of getting rid of it, you know, root and branch, whole, you know, everything. But I know maybe we would differ on that. But I think we would all agree everything must be brought back to the Word of God. And that was not in the Colson Center webinar. No. That would have been great if they had started there and said, well, look, the Constitution, we need to judge that by the Bible. I mean, that's what you're saying. That would have been a great place to start and be like, yeah, we need to look at this. from." The, but that was not brought up at all. And I think that was the disservice to the listeners. Right. And so I think we've addressed it. I want to play this other clip. And then also, I think we've kind of addressed it there for our, for the sake of our listeners. If they're thinking about this, okay, well, should I be a Christian nationalist or not? Whatever. Like, I don't know about the terms. You got to make your own decision on that. But should the nation honor Christ in the civil realm? Yes. Right. There's a responsibility that all, all peoples and the kings, you know, bow to the sun. And then what does that look like? What would it look like in a society if Christ is honored? That's what was not discussed, which is what we try to discuss, which is what you try to address in your book, The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy. Uh, get Luke's book over at Amazon. And, and that's what we try to address on this podcast. And, and you know, what, would, what does justice look like? What happens, what should happen in society when someone murders someone? What should happen when someone steals? What should happen when there's adultery? Uh, what should the state not be doing? right? Which are the civil government instead of use the term state, excuse me. So those are the questions that I think you should be thinking about when you consider these topics. What, what, what would it look like? Should the nation honor Christ? Should the, any state community honor Christ? And then what would that look like? 
So um, I want to play this clip because this kind of goes into what we're talking about um, with the uh, constitutional legislators. This is Rusty Reno, and uh, this is where he says, you know what, we don't even need to elect Christians. You know, they don't have to be Christian. Um, but then he's hopeful. He, he's hopeful in something here. Um, and I want you to listen, Luke, especially for what he's hopeful about. This is just uh, this is a minute and 20. So let's listen to this. So it definitely matters to be involved in the political process and to um, and to elect people who are, want to pull in the direction that we as Christians want to pull. It doesn't mean we have to elect Christians. Uh, it could be secular people who agree with us or people of a different faith who agree with us. Um, and also it means, uh, you know, not I mean, one thing I like, one thing that's really striking about these essentially anti-pornography or at least pornography restriction laws is that is that there's a sense of initiative for people here. It's not just we got to wait and change the culture and convince people not to use pornography. No, actually, one reason we have government is to restrain vice, <laughs> you know, to honor the things that are virtuous and to restrain the things that are vicious. St. Paul tells us as much in, the, in Romans 13. So, um, so I think, I think uh, I, I'm not as pessimistic as a lot of people are. I think, I think there is a rising tide of prudent, wise efforts to, um, to legislate against the excesses of, um, of, of, of a kind of secular, uh, secular and uh, progressive outlook that I think has gone way too far in deregulating our society. Hmm. Way too far in deregulating our society? Right. Did he just say that? Yeah, he did. Did, did. did I just hear that? Way too far in deregulating our society? No, I. Wow. Now, I, I think they've gone too far in deregulating justice, but deregulating society? Again, this is not couched in reality. That is, that is quite the opposite. They regulate everything. My goodness. What yeah. in the world? So his hope there at the end was that we could legislate we could legislate against the excesses of, I forget what, what he said there, the excesses of secularism. Um, and he was talking about, I think the law in view was some sort of regulation saying, if you're going to view pornography, you have to give your ID or something. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what he was talking about specifically. Cause he said, we're not, mm -hmm. we're not dealing with, you know, adultery or fornication. We're just going to regulate how people view pornography. And his hope was, well, yeah, we can get more laws and, you know, we don't even need Christians. So in the end, I mean, this is the practical outworking. It's, in, it's consistent with his view that, hey, we're in the constitutional framework. You know, we want some vague Christian values. And uh, let's see how much we can kind of just curtail, you know, what, what the, the liberals are doing. Um, it, it's, and, and there was several things like that, which it basically seemed to me, let's promote Christianity within statism. And we've already kind of defined that. So, for example, they talked about tax-exempt status for churches. Well, yeah, I mean, Christ we want a Christian nation, so we should have tax-exempt status for churches. Let's still have the whole apparatus of forced taxation, but let's Christianize it and not tax the churches. Uh, and let's do visas for pastors. Like, you know, let's still do all these immigration laws that aren't found in the Bible. But if they're Christian pastors, you know, let's, let's get them in here. Translation, if we just get enough crumbs. Uh, that, that, then we'll go along with statism here. Just just give some crumbs every once in a while. Th th this is this is maddening to me um, because again, you, you mentioned uh, you know, Travis. You mentioned confessionalism, and and confession is agreeing with God about what He says about us. And we will not I, I, in, in that clip. I, I, I was just struck again. We will not talk about this the way God talks about it. He calls things wicked and vile and idolatrous right and instead we're right there bless his heart we got we got terms like uh pull in the direction that we want to pull man does this ever sound soft how about uh restrain vice and restrain that which is vicious not that which is wicked that which is vicious. I, I know. I was like, what, what translation is he using? Is that like yeah, some yeah. sort of Anglican <laughs> translation? No, okay. He's Catholic. Yeah, he's, uh, Roman yeah, Catholic. He, he's RC. Yeah. Uh, legislate against. Where did he get that word from? Against excesses. Excesses of, of what? We will. Uh, we right. are going nowhere. Yeah. Right. Unless we can call this what God calls it: right. wicked, right. vile, yeah, sinful. Yeah. They come into your, nowhere. They come in your house and they start fighting excesses in your house. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. say, "Well, no, you can't do that." But you just said we got to fight against excesses. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's totally undefined. It's it's maddening. It it. it uh. 
So uh, I did my master's thesis on Romans 13. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I was always baffled by as I was studying that passage was that Paul is basically arguing that the role of civil government is to uh, approve or praise, depending on how you translate it, the good and to punish the bad, right? And I just thought, okay, is he talking? Because at that point in my life, I didn't really kind of, I hadn't moved beyond the idea of natural law and, you know, coming from the perspective of where maybe John Stone Street and, and those other guys were at. And it was so perplexing to me. I just remember as I was working through that, uh, I was like, what does he mean by the good and the bad here? I just, I guess it's civic good, civic bad, you know, some generic How thing. How long had you been in church up at that, up to that point? Well, I was raised Roman Catholic. Okay. So I came from that yeah. natural law, you know, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas type of thinking, yeah. uh, like a Michael Knowles for, you know, yeah. something like that. Stephen Wolf. Uh, or Stephen Wolf. Yeah. Real talk. Um, yeah, definitely. So then I, I was probably more like a Stephen Wolf at that point because I was Presbyterian, but I had not really come to grips with the the idea of you know Van Til and and all that worldview you know uh, so all that is to say uh, something that was really helpful for me was to realize that the good and the bad there are defined by what mm -hmm. yes by the standard amen what is the, the standard the legislature yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> the standard is not the legislature yes the standard of good and bad is God's word amen you know yes <laughs> or or to, to joel's point can, can god's we say, law can we say god's, god's law, law. But, but, can we say it but do you see how much sense that makes and yes. do, you, do you see do you see how much sense that makes and how yes. how how long it takes you to meditate on that before you go oh yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah you know and and there are so many christians walking around without that kind of thinking because their pastors are not equipping them or not challenging them at all and it there's so much statism deprogrammed with that observation you just made yes. so much of it and i say that because you know i was i was already at that point uh what like 29 30 years old and i had studied in bible college mm -hmm. i studied in seminary and i could not understand what he meant in that passage mm -hmm. and i it's really crazy. wrestled yes. with it and, and, you know and, and even in that same passage <laughs> in romans 13 this is a price so a lot of people we can't figure out what what evil is and we have half the ten commandments in the same chapter and we're still scratching our head over right. what constitutes evil this is this is terrible yes uh, there's a quote here i wrote this down from rusty reno and this okay this is what he said as a le he's talking about if he were a legislator so what he thinks the legislative branch should be doing as a legislator i just want to see people in church so <laughs> His idea was they were talking about these blue laws and the things. Well, can we at least make laws that make church attendance easier? Our goal here is not justice. It's like we're going to use the statist apparatus. We're going to use the legislative branch. We're going to use man-made law. And our goal is can we encourage people to go to church? It's just like what in the world? Yeah, let's get it back into the churches where you know homosexuality is celebrated let's get, and and you know perversion and 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 more statism is taught in our churches. Let's get everyone back in there. Brilliant idea. Just Maybe genius. Maybe send agents to my house when my kids were small to help change the diapers so it'd be easier to get out of the house and get to church <laughs> on time. So. It you know, in, in the end, to me, I mean, he's saying, look, we don't really need Christians to do this. We're certainly not going to talk about God's law. We're just going to try to pull in the general direction here. I mean, if anything, maybe we can, based on a historical, you know, tradition and the Constitution, maybe we can get back to some sort of blue. I mean, that was it, you know. So in his mind, I guess the wicked, you know, they can understand justice, contra the Proverbs, but he never gets the biblical law. And it's always about balance and cultural conditions. Um, and, and I get you could have that conversation about where we're at, but you still have to have, you know what you're aiming at. What's the goal here? Is it justice or is it, you know, the 1950s? What, what yes. is it? What's the goal? And he says, well, you know, we can satisfy the demands of the majority if we, you know, if that burdens the minority only slightly. I mean, it's all this, you know, Lockean, Enlightenment, natural law thinking like, <clears throat> excuse me, this is our goal. You know, how do we get there? Well, we're, we can't go to biblical law. So let's, uh, you know, let's see if the secularists can help us out here. They don't have to be Christian. And, uh, you know, whatever we need to do, is, as long as we don't burden too many people with our Christianity. 80, 80 million uh, dead babies have been burdened with somebody's morality. Right. Um, <clears throat> all right. We got a few more minutes here. Um, let's see here. 
Okay, Stone Street said at one point, he says, you know, we're so far from the ideal, which I don't think they really addressed what the ideal was. It would have been, <laughs> would, would, would have been nice if they said, you know what, if we had a righteous society, here's what it would look like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with people still sinning and committing crimes, so to speak, what would that look like? Um, but what he said, look, at this point, I just want to get Jack Phillips to keep his livelihood. Jack Phillips, the, the Colorado cake maker who uh, didn't want to bake the cake celebrating homosexuality and he doesn't want kids to be mutilated referring to transgenderism <clears throat> so but what they never asked in the in the webinar forum whatever it was they never said well okay how did we get here how did we get to this point um and i would think that would would be important maybe they tried to touch on it briefly but they never addressed god's law we've cast it behind our back we've we rejected you know god we've replaced god's law with man's law and it was just, to me, it left a lot to be desired. Um, so I have, I have another clip I want to play before I do that. Uh, any other thoughts on what we've played so far? Any thoughts on, on the podcast you listened to, Luke? Um, any, anything? I know you guys, both of you left your notes at home. <laughs> well, your notes are, are very helpful, and they've basically covered most of Well, they're of biased of, towards... Yeah towards my view the, the standard of the standards of our government is just is way too low i mean, I mean it's, it's way too uh, it's well I mean, you might even say it's too high because they're asking them to do mu much more than what they're supposed to be doing and so in that way it's, the standard's too high but but they're asking all the wrong questions you know i mean like especially you know uh i think uh, doug wilson did this he he said um you know the question at the time when he was talking about this was do, do you in in my version of christian nationalism if you will do you get to have your mosque and um you know he he, he talked about that and he did when he did an interview with i think it was that was it the babylon b guys they did an interview with i forget who it was but he was doing an interview with someone and he was talking about well you know do you get to have there that they were talking about the question do you get to have a mosque in a christian nation and in my opinion that's couching that's couching the question in the wrong terms because i want to know in your society who is this person walking around asking people what they're building i want to know who who who's that person who's that officer who's been authorized by the state to go into people's private property and demand of them what it is you're building or who's that person that uh, we all have to report to to tell or ask and get our buildings approved so when you ask the question, "Do you get to have your mosque?" you're already behind. You're 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 already behind the um, the, the, the 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 discussion is couched in the wrong framework. Of course, if if we completely deprogram the statism from our minds, we wouldn't be asking that question because they're in a, in a righteous society. There's nobody walking around saying, "Hey, what are you building?" And you have to ask me before you build that. And I have to prove it. And I have to see the plans. And you got to pay this much money so that I can get out there and do it. So, you know, a, a lot of the discussion in the podcast that I listened to was you're just thinking about this in terms of statism. You're thinking about everything in terms of statism. And we need to deprogram that from our minds. Uh, I mean, use, using the law of God. And, and But first, we need to believe it. You know, I, I think that's important. We need to believe that the the bible does address and talk about these things because a lot of people who are talking about this are knowledgeable of the scriptures but they don't believe that the bible has the solution to it so we have to first you know in addition to reading the bible we have to believe it and we have to believe that it is sufficient from genesis 1 1 to revelation 22 that the the answers to these problems are in there and if we don't and if we don't believe that then we'll always couch it in the way the world wants us to couch it yeah. So, yeah, for your uh, deprogramming of status society, you need to get Luke's book, The Sound Doctrine of Theocracy. And I read it each day. I'll get a daily dose of deprogramming, which we certainly need. Or Chris's book, new book. Yeah. Yes. Seven, Seven status, status sins. sins. Seven status sins. Yep. My book and Luke's book available on Amazon. <laughs> Check them out. Um, all right. So, Hunter, I want to play this one more clip. We got a few more minutes. This is the last clip I have. This is Hunter Baker, where he, again, brings up the church-state relationship. But he also says there's this growing, you know, interest in Christian nationalism. So I want us to listen to this and interact with it. So there's value uh, to the Christian faith and, and the, the degree to which it has penetrated our culture. Um, but this Christian nationalism is, is a desire to sort of return to this more official relationship. At least that's the way I see it. I mean, 
Rusty's talking about something different than what I what I see happening on the Protestant side. Um, and and I'll conclude with this. I think that Christian nationalism on the Protestant side is is growing rapidly. Um, I, uh, I had a young man in my Sunday school recently uh, tell me, you know, he thinks he's a Christian nationalist. I gave a presentation to a group of pastors and um, one of the pastors asked the other pastors, how many people in your churches are interested in Christian nationalism? And uh, virtually all the pastors raised their hands. Um, and I think that what they're referring to is this more uh, muscular, statist uh, kind of Christian nationalism um, that we see coming coming out of uh you know, people like Stephen Wolf. Who's arguing? I mean, I'm sure there are some people and, you know, and there have been situations in the past where there was an official state church, but that's certainly not what, what we're arguing for it. And it's certainly not. So, but Hunter, Hunter said this in, in the, another point, he said, if soft Christian nationalism means the core constitutional heritage of the U S then I'm all in. And that goes to my point earlier at the end, they're both kind of agree. Well, but uh, do they? Okay, what, what do you mean by that? And how do you judge it? Because if we want to go core constitutional heritage, let's go back to you have to be a Christian to serve in the civil magistrate, state mm -hmm. constitutions. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to laws against uh, adultery, uh, sodomy, uh, blasphemy. So what there's, th there was really no substance I found to this webinar. At the end, you say, well, let's just go back to the constitutional heritage. Well, what is that? Right. And is that perfect? To Travis's point, if it's not perfect... How do you judge it? Um, right. So I do agree, though, with Hunter in a sense when he says that there's this statist, statist kind of Christian nationalism. I think I've tried to make that point. I think that's kind of Stephen Wolf's uh, argument to a degree. Hey, we're going to accept these certain structures. Maybe natural law leads us to say, well, yeah, we can have you know, a legislative branch, uh, you know, or we can have government schools. You know, we might disagree agree on some things there but we can have all these things and now we just need to christianize it and so and that's how so many people think of even what we're doing here you know and i've interacted with it well you know you guys want the you know the government to to come into your home and and enforce biblical law I was like well no that would be you know against biblical law so you know jackbooted federal agents you know, so it's like we're to your point luke we're so programmed by statism that any thought of well, we need to have a Christian society is automatically transposed mm -hmm. onto statism. Yes. And, right. even, and, that, and that way it becomes unattractive. Right. It becomes unattractive. When, when, when you view biblical law through the status lens, you're like, you know, how, how would you, and, and that's also, you know, a question that people bring up, like, well, we just want to take biblical law and put it in the constitution. No, no, well, I don't want to do that because then we're back to statism again. Well, that's, and I wrote an article on the LancasterPatriot.com or an editorial about Doug Wilson's comment about your book, mm -hmm. and he called it a poison pill. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, it, you know, what makes Christianity and biblical law unattractive is not what you're arguing for, but I would say what Stephen Wolf argues for. To me, that's unattractive, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe that's a subjective thing, you know, a poison pill thing, but it's like, you, you want to you take our state of structures and just make them Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, yikes. Yes. You know, like, yeah, what you're right. arguing for is like, what does the Bible say? Um, so anyway, you know. I got a different angle on all this. Um, Let's hear it. Which has to be uh, kind of like focused on myself here a little bit. I, I'm going to now be the topic of what I'm about to say. But these guys sound so smart. Hunter Baker and, and, and Rusty Reed, they sound so smart and they sound, they sound so articulate. And I'm so jealous. Because what do I sound like? You know, I sound like a flaming fundamental Baptist, you know, that can't match my orange tie with my polyester socks, you know, up there screaming and yelling and so forth. But the, the fact of the matter is, you, you, in, in part, you sound so smart because you have no standard at all. So, and if you don't have a standard, you can really sound smart. You can talk all around and use really vague terms. But if you don't have a standard... What what are you actually saying? So I want to ask this question to you guys. As we, you know, I mean, I'm, I know you mentioned we don't have a whole lot of time left. What did Rusty and Hunter and John Stone, Stone Street? What did they actually say? Yeah, well, great question. That's, that's what I wanted to get to. Get their to conclusions. the conclusions with that. Yeah, basically, what? Okay, what's the what's the conclusion here? And they did come down on a couple of conclusions. And it was it was very very unhelpful 
to you, to put I think it nicely. Lame is the word that yes, you lame used was the me. word that I used. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, for uh, Reno, if I remember correctly, uh, his his conclusion was, well, you know, uh, getting the right judges in place has made a big difference. Okay, so conclusion: get the right judges in place. Uh, and then Hunter Baker gotta get the right judge for the right for the state of society. Yeah, give them this good judge. They don't have to be Christians though. Yeah, right. So the, right. Wicked, the wicked can understand justice. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So then, uh, and then Hunter Baker's conclusion was: it wasn't um, let's get our kids learning the Bible and understanding mm. true Christian liberty and, all, and no, it wasn't that. It was let's get our kids learning civics. I know that was shocking to me. I'm like civics. That's the answer here. Yeah. Oh my word. I mean, you know, it's gonna fix everything. A couple civics lessons. That'll yes. do the trick. I, I oh, was like, man. you know, I enjoyed civics class in school, and I even went to public school. Uh, but I like history, so you know, it, it was interesting to me. But I don't think that that is going to solve our predicament. <laughs> yeah. How about that's understatement. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna solve our predicament. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that's that's where it, it just fell flat. It really did. And that's the typical conservative mantra. Let's get back to civics. Let's get back to the Constitution. Let's, you know, and I'm okay with, I think it would be a step in the right direction to at least, and this is something like a Doug Wilsonian type of thing to say, to at least get back to the Constitution and actually do that. that I would think be I, pr a step I prefer in the right your direction. other thing. Let's at least say the Constitution is not supreme. I, I, I can't agree. go with you on that other point. Let's just get back to the concept. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying let's, as a first step, at least get to that point because we are way beyond that at nah. this point. Uh, but then, okay, now let's re-examine the Constitution and say, where is this in contradiction to Scripture? And that needs to be changed. And then that's where we can have our discussions like we've had on this podcast about should we even have a Constitution or not and all yeah. that. But... Um, I think yeah, it's okay so, to have a a, a a a constitution. I think I don't think I think every nation needs a constitution. It's just what does that constitution say? Kind of like a Magna Carta. Yeah, you just you, you need you, there, there needs to be compact. Yeah, there, yeah, there needs to be a covenant. Yeah, and you got to write so it down. So basically, in our discussion before, it sounded like you were saying we shouldn't have any of that. We just need bare scripture. Well, we were talking about the legislative you know, branch specifically, yeah. but yeah, but, but that's, no, no. that is a legislative branch. We shouldn't right. get into this. We'll, we'll have another episode. Right, but, yeah, <laughs> I think it's I think it's okay. The idea of a constitution is fine. You know, here's here's yeah. what we're gonna do. Right. This uh, that's fine. There's nothing like, wrong with like, that. Like kind of like uh, Alfred the Great's, you know, dooms is that yeah, his dooms. I mean, but I mean, what does that constitution say? Does it say it's the supreme law of the land? Right. Then there's a problem. And I'm and I'm a I'm a hundred percent behind the idea that that it always needs to be subservient to scripture. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. I think we need to start there. That's yes. all I push back on you and say, I'm not going to, I wouldn't put any effort into saying, let's just return to the constitution because if the constitution is in fact fundamentally flawed, returning to it might well, make I think things you're worse. you're putting words in my mouth. No. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just saying if that's the, I'm just I'm saying, saying as, a, as an initial step, let's start moving. Okay. Let's at least get rid of all the administrative state and, you know, like let's get rid of yeah, all I this mean, extra stuff initially here. Drain I, the swamp as the Trump I'm, lovers I'm, like I'm to say. I'm going to stand my ground on that though. I just, <laughs> I, if you're saying as an initial step, I mean, this is not something that's going to take five minutes. If you're putting all your efforts into, Hey, l let's get back to the constitution. And then later you'll be like, okay, well now let's examine this. I just can't get on board with that. Yeah, but and that, I, I agree with you yeah. that there are definitely some major faults like eminent domain and such, yeah. you know. So we're going to do – we need to do another episode. We'd love to do one more on that specifically on is any sort of covenant uh, legislation proper. But we'll come back to that. Yeah, but I guess the, the point that you originally made here – okay, so their conclusions on the on the panel discussion were very, very lame. Right. And that was, your, would, that was your point. Yes. That was a great point. Well, so then what would we say should be the conclusion of it? And I guess one of the things I'm wondering is, should we even, are we comfortable with the term Christian nationalism? Because it is a huge discussion right now in not only Protestant, but Catholic circles and, and others, Christian circles in general, um, and even in uh, secular conservative circles, and, and the progressives are talking about it, like to your point, mm -hmm. what you started out with, the, the liberals know more about it than the conservatives do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because it's this boogeyman to them. 
Um, so is it is it a redeemable term? Like sometimes we can take terms like the term Christian originally started out as a as a way of them talking derogatorily about the people who followed Christ. Well, we've we've owned that term. Can we own this term? I guess is the question. Yeah, that's a question. I don't know if I have an answer to that right now, personally. Um, if anybody else wants to address that, they can. I know we're running out of time, so I'll let anybody address Travis's question there. And then one of the points, this is a very simple point. Like, what's the what's the conclusion? I mean, Hunter Baker saying there's all these, every pastor raised their hand because there's people mm -hmm. in the church that are like either interested or say they are. And I think that's because people want answers. They want answers to life's problems, society's problems. We've talked about this before, Joel. You know, in the past, the Christian said, we don't have the answers for society. The Marxists came in and said, well, we do. And then, you know, a lot of Christians or, you know, professing Christians were like, okay, well, ch church can't give us the answer. These guys can. And so I, I think, you know, real simple, instead of, and you've kind of already addressed this, instead of teaching our kids civics from the status perspective, let's teach them God's law. Can we start there mm -hmm. with God's law and what does justice look like? Um, I think that's a very fundamental place to start. And people might say, well, that's too simplistic. Well, it wasn't addressed in the, in the webinar, yeah. you know? Yeah, so that's right. Uh, any other comments here to Travis's point about the term Christian nationalism and also the conclusions? Uh, and just to help maybe our listeners say, how should we think about society, justice? Should we want the nation yeah. to honor Christ? Yeah, in my case, I, you know, I've, I've, I, I'm, still I'm still wrestling with the term Christian nationalism. But I've gone on record before saying I am a definite Christian internationalist. Now, how that, that that fits in with Christian nationalism as we understand it, I don't know. But the scriptures are very clear. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, all ye lands. Know ye that the Lord, he has made us, not we ourselves, all ye lands. All lands are to submit to Christ. There's no question about that. I, I, I want to say this about, about the standard. <clears throat> My frustration with the podcast was we never heard the standard except maybe the Constitution. And Luke and I have talked about this before, and I think we, we've all talked about this. Either either the Constitution is the standard, and that Constitution then judges the Word of God, or the Word of God is a standard, and that standard judges the Constitution. One way or the other, there's no third way. And that's, and that's where Christians won't go. They, yeah. won't, they, they will not go there. They and, just like, I do not want to look at the Constitution through a biblical lens. And that's my point, I think, Travis, like going back to the Reformation, I would not have been on board with someone saying, hey, let's just go back to this Vatican Council. Can we get back to that first? And then we can try to say whether the Roman Catholic Church is being faithful to the Bible. No, it's like, this is where we're at. What does the Bible say? So that's just my concern. We, we can't just be like, well, let's just get back to the Constitution, you know, and then we'll figure it out from there. Uh, I, I don't think that's that's wise thus says the lord not thus says the constitution which is a place that many christians will not go luke your final thoughts on uh christian nationalism anything do you want our listeners I, to think I, about? i've said before that christian nationalism i think uh, is a fruit of 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 faithfulness to to god uh to christ in his word uh you know christian nationalism in my mind is deuteronomy 4 when the you know the nations are looking at your nation and saying who what other nation is like this with who serves a god has god so near to them has laws like these that's christian nationalism it's a it's it's a product if you will uh, you produce christian nationalism and you don't get it until other nations are looking at your nation saying what is an understanding and wise people like this you can say we're a christian nation all you want you can uh you know um talk about christian nationalism and you can say we have a lot of christians in this nation but it doesn't mean anything until other nations look at your nation and say what it says in deuteronomy 4 with laws like these and a god so near to it and a wise and understanding people I don't care about Christian nationalism until we produce that out of our country. All right. Well, those were attempts to answer your question. Travis, anything you want to add here at the end about your thoughts on this webinar, on the, on the term Christian nationalism, and any advice for people? I, I want to give a couple things at the end here, just advice for people who, are what, who watch something like that or who see Christian nationalism in the news, and, and how should they think about it? What should they be looking for? But anything you'd like to add? Uh, I think just for clarification purposes on that question of, you know, can we actually adopt this term? Um, at the end of the day, I don't think it's, you know, it's a hill that I'm willing to die on right now, but I am comfortable with the term. 
uh, and Vody Bauckham, I think it was, uh, was the one who said, well, you know, if what you mean by that is, uh, I prefer to have a nation instead of be a globalist or, and I think they talked about that on the webinar too. Right. Um, that was, I think a helpful point. Yeah. We don't want a globalist. Society. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm on board with that. I, I like the idea of, I think it's, it definitely makes sense that we have nations. I mean, that's it's in the Bible, in the Bible, it, you know, we're supposed to go baptize the nations, you know, again, that's it would be nice commission. if they went to that. And even in Wolf's book, and instead of all this highfalutin arguments about like the Bible says there's nations, but anyway, yeah, carry on. But I, I, you know, and then, okay, well, what do we want that nation to consist of or, or what religion, like we said, is going to be the standard for that nation? Well, I think it should be Christianity. Okay. Well then I'm a Christian nationalist. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And, and that and doesn't I think mean that, you agree with everything in this book here by Stephen. Well, Wolf. and that's, that's, that's the issue. That's part of the problem, yeah. you know, and that gets back to the idea of like all these different factions within this movement. If you want to call it a movement, you know, you're going to have some, you know, the, like the Pentecostals over here who, uh, and I think you're doing a, a podcast soon on Julie Green. We need to do our second one. Did you get my email? Oh yeah. She's yeah. coming back to Lancaster County. Yeah. So I'm trying to get Ernie like in here. That, I don't know if he's not coming back. Sorry. Uh, you know, somebody like that would probably say she's a Christian nationalist. Oh and, yeah. You know, and then you got like the, the MAGA type, you know, that's her. She's kind secular of with, yeah. okay. conservatives right. who she wouldn't be secular, but right. she'd claim conservatives who, who would say, yeah, sure. I'll be white. I'll be Christian nationalist. But then, I'll, then you get like that white Christian. So there's all these things that kind of muddy the waters. But if we get back to the basic idea, like I just said, well, okay, I prefer to be a nationalist in the sense, or even like Joel said, an internationalist, like there should be cooperation amongst nations, you know, then yeah, I'm a Christian nationalist. Okay. And I think that brings a little bit of clarity to it. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully that's helpful to our listeners. I would just say when you're watching something like from the Colson Center, anybody talk about Christian nationalism or any, any sort of political governance type thing, you need to go back to Joel's thing, the L word, all right? God, God's law. You, you got to get back to it now. Cause the you're, you're, you're in the swamp every other way. You're, you're, you're just grasping for something solid. And you're not going to get it. Right. And that's the point. I think some people listening, especially people that may not be familiar listening to that webinar, unfortunately, I don't think they left with much clarity. And so what I would say, whenever you're listening to something like that, you need to be asking this question. Okay. What is justice? And what are righteous laws? Because you mentioned Deuteronomy 4, and it says, and what great nation is there that has uh, that has statutes and rules so righteous mm -hmm. as all this law? Mm -hmm. So th there's, there's, there's righteous rules, and there's unrighteous rules. There's justice and injustice, and that was not covered. So if you just leave it at a very surface level, well, we want a Christian society where most people are Christian. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think we all agree with that. We want everybody to turn from their sin and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins um, so that they can spend eternity with Christ. Amen. But what does justice look like in society? That's really what we should be asking here. And we've covered it. There has to be some standard, and they've assumed it. Oh, genocide is bad. So ask that question. And, you know, get Luke's book, keep listening to our podcast. Most importantly, read the Bible. That's the standard. What is God's law? And then you can understand, okay, what are these guys saying? How does that line up with God's law? I think that's what will help people. So any final words? Well, it comes to mind that uh, God's law will make us wiser than our teachers. Right. You know, and, and like Joel pointed out, you know, Rusty Reno, Hunter Baker, John St these guys are really educated guys. And, and I would argue that, you know, especially like John Stone Street, his breakpoint is very helpful in many ways, and I enjoy listening to it. Um, and First Things is, is a great magazine to read too. But at the end of the day, when they don't want to come back to God's law, guys like us are wiser. Mm. And that's what the Bible says. Amen. Yeah. You know? yeah. Amen. Well, hopefully that was helpful. I enjoyed that discussion very much. I'm sure we'll circle back around to a lot of these topics, which is what we often do. I think a couple of things we need to address. We do want to get back to even get more in depth into the U.S. Constitution, but also, especially from that podcast that you listened to, Luke, uh, John Stuntree brought up immigration. And I, I think we should do an episode on that. I think we might, we might have some different views there and we can hash things out. I think that would be ex exciting. Got to do immigration. Yeah. Got to so, do it. All right. Well, thank you all for coming in. Uh, for more information uh, about the Lancaster Patriot, go to thelancasterpatriot.com. To support our show, go to patreon.com slash thelancasterpatriot. Until next time, remember that Christ, not man, is king. So long. <laughs>